Will the MacBook Air M2 work for live streaming or for that matter, any MacBook Air? In this video, you're gonna find out when it can and when it cannot work and why. I'm Laria Petrucci, let's dig in. So here's the deal. There are two types of streaming that you can do on a computer. You can stream from a browser with services like StreamYard, Restream, Wave Video, and more, or you can download software and stream from that like Ecamm, vMix, or OBS. Each has different answers, so let me break it down. First of all, well, let's talk about software because if you've been around me for any length of time, you probably want to use software to get the best of the best. Now, it is not recommended to stream using software from a MacBook Air. Now, to be fair, it could work to a point. Some people get away with it with a camera and a mic and no graphics or interviews. You could maybe do a very simple graphic, but not a lot. Interviews are where you're going to really see some problems and also animated graphics or lots of them. So why is it on the no list exactly? Well, it really boils down to not having an active cooling. In other words, it doesn't have a fan to cool down the computer, which means it's gonna start off really fast, but as the computer gets hotter, that's where you're gonna start seeing issue because when your computer is doing an intense amount of work, which streaming is, especially the more professional you make it, with graphics, animated overlays, interviews, screen sharing, and all of the things, it requires more oomph from your computer. If we wanna get geeky here, let's break it down a little further. Basically, a computer without a fan can only dissipate heat into the body of the laptop, meaning it, the laptop's body is the only place it can put heat, right? So once that saturates to prevent damage, the only thing it can do is slow the computer's processing down to reduce the temperature. Basically, we're throttling performance at that point. It's kind of like slowing down a car to prevent engine damage. That means that it's great for what we would call bursty workloads like launching apps or browsing the web or doing short high load efforts like rendering video, encoding, or streaming, but not for sustained workload of local processing. Longer videos, lots of graphics, lots of effects, filters. For that stuff, you really want the bigger laptop and of course the fan for active cooling. And I know some of you, you're gonna hear me say all of that and you're gonna say, meh, Luria, I'm I'm just gonna do it anyway. So what happens when your MacBook Air, even the M2, does not stay cool? Well, your live stream is gonna get slower because of that throttled performance that we just talked about. You might see dropped frames, your live stream might be choppy, uh, even worse, your apps, the app that you're streaming from or screen sharing or anything else, you will see it become non-responsive. So you're not gonna be able to do any thing and potentially your software could lock up and you would be having to kill the stream another way. Now, the MacBook Pro, the Mac Mini, the Mac Studio, those are all good options. What about that second option, streaming from a browser like StreamYard or Restream or Wave Video? In this case, you're not actually downloading any software, you're literally just browsing the web, you're going to that website and you're live streaming through their platform. Now, you should generally be fine using the browser-based platforms on a MacBook Air because the load is happening on their server, not your local machine. It could potentially have some level of issues, but not the amount that you're going to experience with software-based streaming. However, there's another reason you may not want to use browser-based streaming even on a MacBook Air, and that is the lack of ports. You are going to need a dock to connect your camera and your mic and all of the things, and that's going to introduce extra cost, and so at that point, you might as well upgrade, right? <laughs> and get everything that you need to be able to also have a future-proofed system that you can do the software, you can get fancier graphics, and you can do all of the things you will over a period of time. If you want a personalized list of gear that you should buy for your cameras and lights and mics, then click that link in the description and we will give you a downloadable list, everything you need to know without any decisions needed on your part. And here you can watch a video all about which specs you need to buy in your next Mac. And if you want to learn whether you should use Restream to Multistream or use software, click that link right here and I will see you over there.